Okay, Glyn Jewis here again with part two of the Run for Alfie poster. And this time we're going to work on the sky and make it just a little bit more dramatic. Ideally, this would have happened in camera at the time we were taking the shot. But unfortunately, unfortunately, there was a few things against us. And one of the main ones was that the sky itself was dull and featureless. No matter how much we tried to burn it down in camera using our flashes, it still remained dull and featureless, albeit just a little bit darker. So we're going to have to burn down the sky and make it just a little bit more interesting using Photoshop. Now just to show you, one thing that we can sometimes do in Photoshop is use the burn tool to burn down what sky we have and that can, that can sometimes bring out details. But you'll see in this example here when I press O to get my burn tool and set the exposure to 20%, even when I sort of brush over the sky as you can see in the top left hand corner here, it's not really having that much impact. There's nothing there for it to sort of darken down and add a bit more drama to. So that option is definitely out the window. What we're going to have to do is bring in a fake sky or a sky from another photograph, as in this case. Now, before we do that, one thing we're going to do is we're going to make a selection. So pressing W on my keyboard, I'm going to make I'm going to use the quick selection tool, and I'm just going to make a selection of the subjects in this picture. So we're going to just quickly make a rough selection by dragging around the content here, including the ground, the, the uh, grass there up the runner's legs. Don't have to be too accurate with this, just making sure that we do get the majority of the detail in here and uh, down the feet and the last bit of grass there. So we'll wait for that to snap in. There's a few areas that we don't need. So when we've got an area like in between the, the first guy's legs here, which is selected, if we press Alt or Option on our keyboard and then drag inside, we can see that it deletes that option there or deletes that selection. And just the bit between the runners as well, do the same thing on that one and just between their ankles just here. Okay, so that's a selection, just a rough selection, obviously, of the uh, the content. We're now going to save that by going to Select at the top of the screen, choosing Save Selection, and we'll just call that Outline, and click OK. We'll then deselect it by pressing Command or Control D on our keyboard, or going to the top of the screen, selecting uh, <laughs> Select, funnily enough, from the top menu, and then Deselect. Okay, then we're going to choose a sky to fit into this picture. Now, using Mini Bridge, I've got a few skies here we can see in one of my folders. Uh, and we're going to use number 8 here. So we'll just go on that one there, open that sky up. And before we add this into the picture, I just want to add a bit more contrast to this. Uh, go into a pre-programmed one, and we'll just go for a strong, con uh, strong contrast. And we'll flatten that down. We'll press F on our keyboard twice, just so we can go to where we've got the tab view. And I'm just then going to go and click on this image and drag and drop it into the first picture with the runners in. Now, obviously, that's way too big. It's scaled it up. So I'm pressing Command or Control T on my, T on my keyboard to get the adjustment handles. And we're just going to scale it down now so that it encompasses around the picture. It isn't stretched too much, like so. And position it around about... Use the arrow keys around about there is fine. Okay, so now all I have to do then is go to the top of the screen, go to select, load selection, and then just where it says channel here, we'll just choose the, the outline that we did earlier on and called outline there and click OK. And we can see the marching ants now on the picture. And all we're going to do then is come over to our layers panel and click on the third option here, which is to add a layer mask. And what we'll see happen is that and press command or control i to invert it okay there is another way we could have done that quite easily we could have just held down our alt or option key on our keyboard and pressed the mask icon there clearly that isn't a very good uh, selection at the moment but we can improve that just by changing the blend mode of that layer mask layer here to soft light and we'll see straight away yes the sky doesn't become quite as apparent but the selection of the guys is very, very good. We can see that the detail, we've got all the grass has been selected, the hairs, even the fine hair here has been selected as well. We can go back to the normal. We'll see that there's loads of hair missing here. It's very, very jaggedy and very, very poor selection. But just by changing the blend mode to soft light, it brings in details like all the hair and what have you there. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna actually burn down the sky now because there is detail in this sky burn it down so it becomes a little bit more interesting. So before we do that, we just need to uh, merge these layers. We go to the little arrow on the right side of our keyboard, hold down our Alt or Option key, and click on Merge Visible. And that puts a combi combination of all these layers below 
into one just above there. Get O on our press O on our keyboard to get the burn tool, which is this little icon here on our toolbar. We're using the burn tool, and all I'm going to do then is with an exposure of 20% and using the mid tones, about 20% will be fine. I'm just then going to paint over the sky, and we can see that it does in fact bring out a little bit more detail. Now at this stage, don't worry about painting over the subjects because we do have a selection of those and we can delete any areas that we go over with the burn tool, like so. And every time we release the key and then press again, it goes just a little bit darker and adds another 20% like so. Okay, so the sky's looking good. We now need to get that burning off the subject. So what we're going to do then is go to select, load selection, and then go to where the channel, load in the outline that we made, and then press backspace or delete, and that removes it completely. So we can see now that we've got a dramatic sky. We've got the subjects looking nicely exposed. However, there is one small thing I notice comes up when we do this. If we look at the selection where the sky and the grass he meets here, there's a very definite line darkening across the top of the grass. And obviously that doesn't look too, uh, too realistic. So we need to get rid of that because it's obvious that something's being done um, and it stands out to me like a sore thumb. So we need to get rid of that. We can do that by coming over to our layers panel. Uh, both of the layers that involve the sky, we can then put into a group. So we click both of them so they're both active, press Command or Control G and just get a group like so. We'll just leave it calling group one. In fact, no, we'll, we'll rename that to sky. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do to remove this really obvious dark line across here is we're first of all gonna add a layer mask to that group, like so, and then we're gonna go and choose a gradient, a black to white gradient by pressing G on our keyboard or coming over to the toolbar on the left hand side and using the gradient tool there. And we're gonna make sure that we're going from a black to white gradient and also we're gonna make sure that we have it set to the first option here, which is like a linear gradient. All we need to do then is come into the picture, click somewhere at the bottom of the grass, hold down your shift key and just drag up just so we go slightly above it and it deletes it there. So what that's basically doing is re revealing part of the sky from the original photograph below, which is a little bit lighter, but when all said and done, it removes that really obvious line of where we darken down the sky. And if I just turn that layer mask on and off, we can see the impact that that has. It blends it in just a lot easier on the eyes, not so obvious that they've been done some, uh, some retouching. So, that is the sky. In fact, no, we'll stop there for a second. We can just see, just on this little corner here, the top left, where we originally used the content aware fill to add in a little bit of, little bit of sky, there's a very obvious line running just above here. If I just tap on that there, you can see a very obvious line where that little rectangle was where we use content aware fill. So we need to get rid of that before we move on. We're gonna come over to our layers panel. We're gonna flatten this image down. Whoops. We're gonna flatten the image like so. Press Command or Control J just to get a duplicate of that background layer. And I think all I'm gonna to do to remove that obvious line here in the top left hand corner is I'm going to use the spot healing brush and I'm going to use a brush roughly so it covers the uh, the obvious line there just so it covers either side of it and I'm going to use my left and right bracket keys to increase or decrease the size of the brush and all I'm going to do then is just drag out a few line strokes across the obvious uh, line there we go and there's a couple here okay and there we go I think that's it that's it, job done. Okay, so part three, we're gonna carry on. We're gonna change the coloring slightly of the picture, bit of a vignette, burn down the darkening at the bottom of the grass, at the, at the bottom of the picture here, add some text, and we're done. So that is it, and I'll see you in part three.